Wesley's mate try to evade our missile. Good strike footage is operationally priceless. Welcome back one and all, it's Matsmas. I really appreciate you stopping by today. Today we're going to discuss aviation history and particularly the way on which aviation military combat has been filmed. Since World War I and World War II there's always been the need and requirement for feedback of how pilots are engaging targets and of course showcasing to the public is a really important thing. During World War II the public loved to see Jerry getting blasted out the sky, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, they were the enemy, and if we were able to see footage of, you know, our boys winning the conflict or engaging targets in the air, that was showcasing um, material, and it's always been a particular interest to me ever since I have saw, you know, the old school footage of World War II, um, and how its sort of history has progressed through the ages. I mean, we're talking about aircraft that nowadays can do a billion times more than what obviously, you know, a P-51 or a Spitfire could do back in the Second World War. But how has filming of that combat footage changed? And I think today is one of those videos that really kind of brings to light um, the technology that's advanced through the days. And even till today, some of the footage you see is just incredible. Uh, for its day here, obviously, it's, it's not high-tech HD 4K footage. This just wasn't available back in those days. But it is interesting to see how they've tried their best to develop uh, this kind of footage for learning uh, principles and for, once again, showcasing to the public. This particular conflict, which I'm sure you're all well aware of by now, the Vietnam War, was one of the biggest showcasing, um, you know, footage for aircraft and the United States Air Force uh, ever. You know, it was one of those wars that had a very tainted um, side to it. There was a lot of controversy behind it. And trying to get public support behind the war was very, very important. And being able to showcase this kind of military footage not only brought the um, the bad side, the bad press, but also the good press, you know, uh, that the guys that were being sent there are doing their jobs uh, to the best of their ability and doing what they're told. And, you know, the skills and drills that these pilots were doing in the day were very, very good. And you can see by some of this footage, you know, the way that they're engaging targets, some of the stats that you hear uh, from the war back then were incredible compared to, you know, what we're looking at stats from the Second World War and, and, and beyond. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, guys. It's actually really interesting. Me, I've been very fascinated by how they kind of have progressed filming these kinds of uh, combat footage experience for us to be able to view. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your input on uh, how these, you know, how these uh, combat situations are kind of filmed and how it's been portrayed, and whether or not uh, you think it's something that will continue on in the future. We're we going to see a lot more of. You know, modern day combat footage being shown. It's it's difficult to say because nowadays we don't see as much as we used to, obviously like the Vietnam War, because it's highly classified, there's a lot of controversy. We do see a lot of drone footage and Apache footage, but uh, I don't think we're going to see quite the same sort of footage that we see here in Vietnam. Anyway, I'd love to hear your opinion on it, let me know and I'll just roll on with the video. Hope you enjoy. The end of World War II marked the beginning of a new assault. In the vanguard of the burgeoning jet age, sleek new aircraft were already smashing through the sound barrier. New speeds and performance levels required more sophisticated weapons, radio and radar systems. And once again, as in the past, the advances in the technology of war required corresponding advances in the tools and techniques of war's documentation. This is the story of how a serious technological gap was closed in Southeast Asia when U.S. Air Force combat photography took up the challenge and gave a new look to the age-old language of pictures and in color. mid-60s, the United States became an active participant in South Vietnam's struggle for freedom. In 
Air Force fighter bombers went into action. Only to learn the Air Force photo capability then in the field was too small. The stepped up demand for films, too great. Combat camera development had dropped too far behind supersonic fighter aircraft technology and ordnance delivery techniques. In 1965, recognizing the need for remedial action, the U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff directed that an entirely new operation plan be formulated. The planning task was assigned to Aerospace Audiovisual Service, AAVS, through its parent organization, the Military Airlift Command. MAC. The MAC and AAVS planning staffs followed through. The requested plan was submitted in record time and approval was received in December of that year. Two months later, the 600th Photo Squadron, a single manager combat photo capability, including all photo except reconnaissance, began to take shape at Tonsonut Air Base near Saigon. Combat photo function was beginning to align itself with all other Air Force operations in the theater. Headquartered in Vietnam, the squadron established detachments throughout Southeast Asia. One primary mission is combat documentation, called COMDA. It produces historical documentation footage on the ground, in the air, on every phase of the Vietnam conflict. You see Air Force Comdoc photographers jump into battle. The Comdoc cameramen document anything and everything of significance. the battlefield within minutes. Max medical air evacuation. Back home in less than 24 hours. Magic Dragon, 18,000 rounds a minute. Comdoc footage finds an immediate use and fills an imperative need. It provides a film link between the air staff planner in the Pentagon and the combat operation in Southeast Asia. It also serves to keep the American public informed on the latest progress of their fighting forces. Equally important, it finds a lasting use as visual history caught and recorded at the moment, on the spot. The highest priority in the photo squadron's mission is armament recording photography. This is over-the-target combat documentation, filmed for the most part by cameras installed in the strike aircraft.
strikes are filmed in direct contact with the enemy, under hostile fire, as evidenced by these tracers. It is combat photography in its purest form. The footage supplies vital operational information and answers urgent questions. Was the target hit? Which weapon worked best against it? What improvements in delivery techniques and weaponry are needed? Watch this mate try to evade our missile. Strike footage is operationally priceless. Adequate airstrike coverage calls for cameras filming forward and aft at various speeds and settings, depending on the type of ordnance carried. Some of the sophisticated fighters arriving in Vietnam had no provisions for airstrike photography. Others had outdated gun cameras. AAVS personnel tackled the gun camera problems head on. Today, the gun cameras installed by AAVS in Southeast Asia exceed 95% effectiveness. This aiming device, or PIPR, appears on most gun camera footage. Pod installation fitted to external pylons and mounted on the aircraft at an ordnance station houses two high-speed cameras, one looking forward, the other looking aft. The pod can be used for tail chase and for recording weapon deliveries of its own aircraft. Pod cameras are only an interim measure. The pod development program was tackled with two goals in mind. First, how to best photograph weapon deliveries. And second, how to install the cameras in the aircraft. This latter problem was solved by devising a blister camera installation. Briefly, a blister is a protrusion on the aircraft. This approximated the ideal of mounting the camera array inside the aircraft. Like the pods, they house cameras aimed forward and aft and are automatically activated when the pilot fires his guns or drops his ordnance. Motion picture cameramen and still photographers of the 600th also ride into combat with the jets. attacking heavily defended targets in North and South Vietnam. With the forward air controllers in their low-flying aircraft. From their vantage point, the combat cameraman records airstrikes against the enemy below him. With hundreds of combat sorties flown each day, the 600th photo teams must load, download, service, maintain and repair the airstrike cameras. They work fast to unload the exposed film and get it into the lab for immediate processing. 
The Photo Squadron's five labs are equipped for 16 millimeter color motion picture processing. Housed in air transportable trailers, air conditioned and fully equipped, these labs are the nerve centers of the whole airstrike combat documentary mission. Within hours after touchdown, the labs process and deliver to the fighter unit commanders, intelligence officers, and pilots color films of the day's combat missions for rapid post-strike analysis. This footage documents several strafing runs at an enemy petroleum depot. Here, there's no need for a return mission. The airstrike footage is culled by the film editors at each motion picture lab. The most significant footage is used nightly to brief the commander of the 7th Air Force in Southeast Asia, rushed to the commander of the Pacific Air Forces, to Washington for viewing by the air staff, and ultimately for public release. Strike footage is also carefully screened by the intelligence fraternity at all levels of command. South Vietnam. Fax in spotter aircraft seek out the enemy, mark the location with smoke, then call in the fighters to destroy North Vietnamese and Viet Cong targets, such as base camps, roads and truck parks, food and munition storage areas, supply routes, underground bunkers, trenches, foxholes, and fortifications. fire 6,000 rounds per minute. Until March 31, 1968, Air Force fighters and fighter bombers flew daily missions against North Vietnam major communist military targets north of the 20th parallel. Near Hanoi and Haiphong, pilots struck communist airfields, power plants, iron and steel complexes, and army barracks they encountered heavy, savage, conventional and surface-to-air missile and anti-aircraft fire, as well as enemy mates.
selected original is forwarded to the Air Force archives to be catalogued and stored permanently as a historical record. Another type of airstrike photography is filmed by specially designed cameras focused on the combat aircraft's radar scopes. Immediately after downloading, the exposed black and white film goes into an automatic processor and comes out within minutes, ready for immediate evaluation by the tactical fighter unit. A panoramic strike camera also provides a rapid look at combat results. This camera records an image that extends from horizon to horizon, fore and aft, along the aircraft flight path by means of a rotating prism. A portable processing unit, designed for 70 millimeter film, provides short processing time, ease of operation, and quality reproduction. The transfer film is pre-imbibed with a developer and a fixer. As the transfer film contacts the exposed film, processing takes place, producing both a negative and a positive transparency. Within an hour after landing, prints made from the positive transparencies are ready for viewing by tactical fighter units. They provide excellent operational information for the combat pilots and for intelligence personnel. The most significant negatives are turned over to intelligence for further in-depth study. The 600th maintains a fully equipped still photo laboratory at each of its 17 theater locations for reproducing black and white and color photography. The major portion of the still mission is to produce black and white still photographs for release through information channels in Southeast Asia, as well as base still lab requirements. Additional black and white and color still photographs are forwarded to Washington for release by Air Force information. The original negatives and color transparencies are forwarded to the Air Force still depository for future use and historical preservation. These pictures represent one day's output of quality photography. Still photo coverage includes civic action, newsworthy events, operational combat activity, and the vital airstrike combat mission. All Air Force combat photography from Southeast Asia eventually finds a use. You see it everywhere, in every form of visual media, from newspapers and magazines to motion pictures and television. The Air Force was given the job of defending South Vietnam with its massive air power. An F-105 has just scored another MiG kill. The pilot said, I fired a burst from my 20 millimeter cannon and the MiG blew up only 15 or 20 feet in front of me. Following excerpts from Air Force motion picture productions best demonstrate further use of Air Force combat photography received from Southeast Asia. Benoit in Vietnam. A monthly news review distributed internally throughout the entire Air Force to provide its members with a broad view of significant and interesting events. General William Westmoreland, Commander, Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, in a message to the 7th Air Force, headquartered at Tan Sanuk wrote, the performance of the 7th Air Force in meeting airlift requirements in Vietnam over the past year has been outstanding. Equipment and supplies are unloaded near the village of Tui Hoa for the start of construction of a new air base some 75 miles north of Cam Ranh Bay. All construction is under the engineering supervision of the Air Force Civil Engineers. 45 days ahead of schedule, Tui Hoa Air Base began initial operations. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is Red Rooster Lee. My wingman's been shot down. Sound clips for the Air Force command post and the American public. A pilot is saved by helicopter. A rescue by the Jolly Green Giant. A dramatic, factual, short clip. A report for the air staff and the American public. Although every rescue mission is different, what you have seen happens all the time in this war out here. And that means hundreds of our best men saved. On the ground and in the air, the 
United States Air Force combat photo mission in Southeast Asia is served around the clock from 16 units and its operating squadron headquarters at Tan Sanut Air Base in Saigon. The Vietnam detachments, all operating mainly out of trailers and vans, are located throughout South Vietnam. Cameron Bay, Phan Rang, Benoit, Da Nang, Dui Wong, Nha Trang, Play Ku, Bin Tui, and Phu Cat. The Thai detachments, housed in specially designed air-conditioned buildings, report to squadron headquarters through the 601st photo flight located at Korat. The detachments in Thailand, reporting to the photo flight, are Tak Lee, Uban, Udorn, Utapau, Dong Wong, and Nakom Phanam. This is how the Air Force combat photo mission in Southeast Asia is being accomplished today. An impossible task for the Air Force and AAVS. Had it not been for the valuable contributions and material assistance afforded by various air staff agencies and major commands. We've shown how the Air Force is closing a technological gap, bringing combat aircraft and combat camera together again as a highly skilled working team. Looking back to the start, it seems we've come a long way in a rather short while. Looking ahead to the future, our goal is to keep pace with technology and satisfy the needs of the Air Force. You may rest assured that when your Air Force has done its job in Southeast Asia, the final photographic record will be complete.